Okay, we've got some questions. We do. It's time to bring it on, Pat. Right. This is from Doris, who says, I pray the same prayer every day, and my question is, is it okay to pray the same prayer, or does God get tired of hearing the same thing? Well, it depends on what you're praying. I mean, if you're asking for something you've already gotten, then you, why would you ask for it anymore? Uh, if you uh, have been told no, then why do you keep bothering somebody that's told you you're not going to get it? But on the other hand, if your prayer is, I worship you, I adore you, I love you, you're wonderful, I, uh, you come into his presence with thanksgiving and singing, I think there's nothing wrong with doing that every day. So I don't know. Listen, it's not the words, it's what's in your heart. You know, God is a spirit, and they that worship, worship in spirit and in truth. It isn't the verbiage that matters, it's what's in your heart. Next. Okay, this is Isabel who says, what is the right thing to do when dealing with an adult parent that tells lies about the family? The family has tried talking with her about it, but to no avail. It's affecting the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. It makes the family look horrible to others and is almost like an addiction because of the attention that she gets from it. At the same time, she's hurting so many. We have tried everything and cannot find a solution. You talk about an adult, when you start talking about great-grandchildren, you're talking about somebody in their 70s and 80s or Could beyond. Could there be dementia involved in that, do you Could think? Could be. You, you don't know what you're dealing with at that point. I, I, I think uh, she may be delusional, as you say, dementia. She, she, may, she may be living in a fantasy world, and she's recounting her fantasies. So, so if you just chill out and say, look, Grandma, uh, isn't that nice? And you all laugh together and say, well, Grandma's a little bit out of it. That would be one way. If she is really compass, if she, her mind is working right, then you might have an, what is called an inter intervention where you all get together and say, look, Grandma, you can't be lying anymore. This is a lie. We had enough of it. Mm -hmm. And maybe she'd listen to you. But hey, when somebody gets to be 80 or so, it's a little hard to sway them. Huh. Next. Okay, this is Stanley who says, is it a sin to ask God to remove or kill ISIS terrorists and other agents of evil and Satan? Well, if you read the Psalms, it will smite them with your rod of, uh, you know, bring them down. Jesus said, love your enemies and do good to them and despitefully use you. I think uh, you could ask God to resist the evil. There's nothing wrong with that. And you say, God, please set a wall and resist the evil that is coming upon us. I think that's a good prayer. All right. Okay, this is Andrea who says, Pat, I feel like the entire Christian community has lost its mind. Lately, I've had Christian relatives tell me that when I get to heaven, Jesus will turn his face from me and deny knowing me because my family celebrates Christmas traditionally with the tree, wreaths, baking cookies for neighbors, etc. Please help. Thank you. I wonder where people get these nutty concepts. Who is teaching this garbage? Now listen, most, despite my dear friend Kirk Cameron, most of the traditions we celebrate at Christian are pagan in origin. Saturnalia, an orgy in Rome, had singing of people coming together, singing songs and so forth. They had all kinds of parties. They had, you know, the yule, the mistletoe, all that stuff, the Christmas tree. Most of it has pagan roots. Is God going to turn his face from you because you're worshiping Jesus and you've got a Christmas tree? Of course not. I, I, whoever says this stuff, I mean, where do they get their theology? It's just wrong.